were sinners. <laughs> they were what? Sinners. They had not been offered the right hand of fellowship. They had not had an opportunity to join the church. Nobody got up at the end of the service and opened the doors of the church and said, would you like to join the ministry? They wouldn't offer the opportunity to meet an evangelist on the street and say, come see a man. But they came to a two year and a half old child and he changed them from sinner, from Gentile to stranger, from foreigner to alien and raised them out of a heathen idolatry culture from an intellect that gave them salvation. Yeah. Oh, and isn't it something how you can leave out of the presence of God yeah. being holy and righteous? Yeah. You can leave the presence of God being changed, not being that old person. So consider the mind of the worshiper. They worship him on the basis of their belief. They had a nevertheless mindset. Oh. <laughs> I, I know that he's not grown yet. But I believe that he is the king. So I, I got to do what I'm supposed to do if it were to be true because I have a nevertheless mindset. They worship a kingship that had not become yet. So they have that not yet but soon to come mindset. They worship because of the salvation that he brought. See, sometimes we forget that God is who he is and that the one thing that we have to all that we all share in common is that he saved us and if that ain't not if that's not good enough then something's wrong with you if you can't worship and you can't get excited about the fact that you have salvation there's a problem because the base of your Christianity is that you once was a sinner but now you're saved by grace and if that don't strike a liar under your heart okay, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I can't I can't I can't convince you enough okay let me go deeper let me go deeper the restraint of the condition didn't even move them. The house where they were at didn't change their mind. The mindset of the parents didn't change their mind. The mindset of the leaders didn't change their mind. Isn't it funny how people that even know who they have or what they have don't can't even get it right sometimes? You, you, you would think that Mary and Joseph would join in on the worship. <laughs> you would think that the parents who already had insight to realize on who baby Jesus was, there should be a shouting party going on. But only the three wise men had it because remember, they studied him so they knew what he was going to be. Remember, they crossed over, they took risks. Nobody at this point has done anything like this to show the reference and the homage for Jesus. We're not talking about him at the cross. We're not talking about him getting in the grave. We're not talking about him at the tomb. We're not talking about him doing miracles and performing, raise people from the dead. He hasn't even done that yet. Just on the essence of who he's going to be and what he's going to do. They have one purpose, not to be entertained, not to swipe stories of their good travel and not to fellowship and hang out with friends. They have one purpose and that was to meet God. In doing so, their lives were changed. Here is a wise example of worship. Let us never be guilty again from going to worship service to worship service having no worship. Let us never be guilty again of saying we raise our hands in holy adoration without honoring who God is. Let us never be accused again of having the attitude and the posture of a worshiper when we have not given ourselves. Let us never again travel to church from our home to the next place without entering to the gates with thanksgiving and entering his courts with praise. Great and mighty is our God. 
do for them then. But what he was going to do later. And I can't come into this church with my burdens on my back and my struggles on my mind and impede my worship from happening. I have to worship him for when I leave out of here, I need my blessing to come. When I leave out of here, I need to be changed. When I leave out of here, I'm going to be faithful. What do you say? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, the scripture tells us right now, it doesn't matter what you need to do. It's what your heart gives you to do. Yes. It's a cause and effect. Tap into his presence, people. Yes, God. There's a sound that he's waiting on. There's a worship he's waiting on. Come on, I dare you to worship like never before. Everybody said to your people.
sheep come to the altar. And if you're a spectator, I just ask that you don't think about you, but just...